We are talking about out of control, why disciplining your child doesn't work, and what will by Dr. Shafali Sabari. Have you ever said, my kids are out of control, disrespectful, lazy, temperamental, and on and on? Dr. Sabari compels us to see that perhaps we are the ones that are out of control, and worse, our parenting and discipline is the driving force behind our children's misbehavior. We've all heard of the fifth commandment, honor thy mother and father, yet in the parenting Bible, the first commandment would be honor thy child. The foundation of parenting is having a strong relationship and connection to our children. But how on earth do we expect to have a good relationship with someone we treat as beneath us? Parents often treat their kids worse than they would ever dream of treating a friend or even a complete stranger. What would happen if your boss said, because you were talking to your coworkers during work time, you don't get lunch break for the rest of the week? Or your husband tells you, since you messed up on your diet, you will lose TV time and driving privileges. Your friend comes over for a visit and then yells at you because your house is messy. We would never stand for that treatment, yet we treat our children in this exact manner daily. All of our unrelated punishments, manipulation, and our own emotional outbursts at our children is what undermines their receptivity to our parenting. Before we can expect our kids to listen to us, we need to listen to them. To honor our children, we need to learn to pay attention to their feelings. When children get emotional, our tendency is to tell them they're wrong. You don't hate your brother. Oh, school isn't that bad. Greg isn't really mean. Dr. Sabari says, the point about feelings is they don't have to make sense, don't need to be justified, and don't require our approval. Because we are so oriented to intellectualizing, we want to explain feelings away instead of allowing children to simply experience them. So when your kids confide in you, just like when you confide in others, all they want is to be understood, and you don't need to agree with them to understand them. But remember, our children's bad feelings will result in their bad behavior, so it's our job to honor their feelings and address both their feelings and behavior. Now let's put the spotlight on why we are so reactive to our kids. A pervasive parenting issue is over-identification with our kids. Parents' over-identification isn't always as obvious as a pageant mom trying to relive her glory days through her child, but to a certain degree, we all use our children to feel better about about ourselves. I'm going to string together several Dr. Sabari quotes. I am my child. My child is me mode is when our child refuses to wear the party dress we bought for them, we take it personally. Or if they bring home a C grade, we act as if it's a reflection on our own intelligence. Grades, sports, hobbies, the way the child dresses, the child's behavior, everything becomes a statement about the parent. You see it as a reflection of your own inadequacy, which you find unbearable. We punish them for making us feel inadequate, causing us to become aware of what's lacking in our life." End quotes. We have so many expectations of the way our children should be, how they should act, what they should feel. Our big problem with our kids is really just a big problem with ourselves. Dr. Sabari suggests parents get clear on what requires correction and what just triggers us because it doesn't fit in with our life blueprint, but it isn't actually a problem. She says what we think of as a need for discipline stems not from the child's behavior, but from our emotional attachment to a particular idea of how my child should be. Now, she is not advocating that kids should run wild with no guidance, but our attempt to help our children and teach them are sometimes done in such a manner that actually hurts them and their self-esteem, fostering self-doubt, shame, and even guilt. So most parents know through experience that discipline doesn't work. Timeouts get longer and punishment stricter, yet the same issues seem to crop up time and time again. Dr. Sabari says, this system of rewards and punishment undercuts a child's capacity to learn self-discipline, subverting their inherent potential for self-regulation, becoming a mere puppet whose performance is entirely dependent on the warden. The child learns to be externally motivated rather than internally directed. As the years pass, it becomes unclear who the warden is and who the prisoner is as both torment each other in endless cycles of manipulation. 
Wow. Rather than manipulation and threats, parents can use cause and effect consequences. In real life, if you show up late to work too often, you will get fired. If you don't pay the bills, the electricity gets shut off. See, when we interfere with our children's real life consequences, it's because we view their behavior as a reflection of us. I would much rather be the parent with a child who gets a bad grade because they forgot to turn in their homework than the parent with a 35 year old living at home because they never learned real life consequences. We can model our consequences to be a natural result of their actions or a predetermined consequence that is relative. So if you don't get a job, you're not going to have money for the movies. If you don't eat dinner, you'll go to bed hungry. If you throw a fit at the party, that means we have to leave the party. See, when our children realize there's a consequence to their actions that actually makes sense, they start to understand when they choose to misbehave, they are essentially choosing the consequence too. I hope you have come to see that our disputes with our children are mirrors into ourselves, revealing our own issues. It's our own problems with consistency, self-worth, conflict resolution, and our ability to demonstrate leadership and authority respectfully and confidently that creates such drama at home. Dr. Sabari gives us many great tips for staying sane, and I picked three of them. The first one is don't get hooked. When you feel triggered by your kids, take a time out for yourself or a time in. Ask yourself what their action made you feel. Just like for your kids, our bad feelings will lead to our bad behavior. So take a moment to collect your thoughts and breathe. The next tip is to pretend you are in a crowded room and all eyes are on you when you feel an overreaction coming on. Simply ask yourself if you would respond in the same way in public as you would at home and this will aid you in not overreacting. And tip three is your needs are important too and part of living together means everyone needs need to be considered. So use when then strategies to make sure everyone's needs are met. When you play dress up, then you need to clean up. When you are running late, then you need to call. When I am upset, then I need some space. Now this book is a must read for parents and in my opinion, another great book is Parenting Without Power Struggle. So check out that review and remember to do the actualization worksheet. Now let's end with a quote from Dr. Sabari. The key to effective parenting is to turn the spotlight away from the child as behaving badly to our own badly behaving emotionality. Unless we identify and untangle our emotional patterns, we will unwittingly foster dysfunctional behavior in our children. Thank you for joining me and you make it a great day.